Let's see how it how it looks, right? Hopefully, our PowerPoint is screen that's not right. But transformers, right? Anybody remember what a transformer made up of? Coils, oh, but before the, before the coil, what we have? Before the coils, what do we have? We have a soft iron core, right? And around the soft iron core, we have coils. Very important. We have uh, what type of supply? We have an alternating supply. That symbol is alternator. And then here we have uh, I just bought a voltmeter, right? So we have a primary side, right? We have a primary side, and then we have a secondary side. Yeah, this means alternating supply, and this is a voltmeter. All right, sorry, they're online. I don't like the way it's working, right? And now we're working together again. All right, so as I said, the transformer. Huh? Right, you're hearing a little bit clearer now online? Yes, sir. Right. So as I was saying, the transformer, the transformer is really a soft iron core. Right. And uh, on the soft iron core, you have coils. So on one of the coils, one of the sides, you might have more. And the next side, you might have less. Right. The supply is always alternating. Right. So I want you to remember that, right, is a E. C supply. This side here is your primary side, and the next side is your secondary side. All right, you put a voltmeter here, but of course it will be alternating as well, right? Right there, there will be coils in the primary side, and there's coils in the secondary side. And there are two types of transformers, right? Remember, during these classes, some of you all would have done the topics already, so you want to use this as a vision as well. All right? So, what are the two types of transformers? What is called the one when the number of coils in the primary is more than the number of coils in secondary? What is called that? More coils to less coils. 
So are you stepping up or are you stepping down? Up or down? Which one? More coils to less coils. So you're stepping down, right? This is a step down transformer. Okay? Step down. Nice. What would happen if the number of coils in the primary is less than the number of coils in the secondary? What are you doing? You're going on? Step up. So you're going on step up. Right? What does step up mean? Step up means that step up means that your voltage output or the voltage in the secondary is greater. Here, voltage in secondary is smaller. Right? I don't want you all to forget the notation, so write down the notation. NP coils in the primary. Okay. All right, so what's here, right? So you have number of cores in the primary, number of cores in the secondary, you have to know what you're labeling, right? Right. And there's a relationship that allows you to figure out how large you book, how large the primary and how large the secondary voltages might be. Anybody remember it? Anybody remember the relationship? Anybody? Oh, you just link the primary and secondary. Yes? Some more signal? Multiply what? So the ratio is used, right? The ratio is number of coils in the primary over number in the secondary is voltage in the voltage in the primary over voltage in the secondary, right? Copy it down. That's a, that's a P there, right? Copy it down.
Right, so this is the relationship between coils and uh, between coils and the voltage, right? So as I said, some transformers will take a large voltage and step it down. Some transformers will take a large, a small voltage and step it up. All right, so for example, the transformers that outside. Three here. Yeah. Gotta go already? Well, talk to him first and make sure. Which, sure, I'll miss any already. Right. So let's take a small example. Let's say I gave you a transformer, and in that transformer, the number of coils in the primary is 300 turns. Coils means the number of turns on, the, on it, right? And then you have coils on the secondary is let's say 700. What, what type of transformer is this? Right. Secondary is more than primary. So this is a step up. Gotta go. It's a step up transformer. Right. Let's say the voltage in the primary is two volts. I want you to, to use the relationship and find uh, Find the voltage in the secondary. Try that first. Use the relationships and, and work it out, right? What's the formula again? NP over NS is equal to, right. Go ahead, work it out. Online message answer. So while you're working it out, think if your answer should be more or less. Right? Only my hand on think for me. Right, cross multiply, work it out, you'll get NP VS is equal to VP by NS, right? You wanna make VS a subject, so carry across NP. So it will be VP NS on NP. And then plug it in. Right, 
right? Um, BP is equal to, BP is two, and S is 700, and uh, NP is 300. Right, it should, would the value be more than two? Because it's a step up, right? How much you got? Four points. We're right wrong with top now. Three, that's two significant figures. 4.6M. Nice. Nice. So that's a quick relationship there for us to work out, right? Right. Next thing we have to do before we, before we move on to the next relationship, we have to understand how it works. Anybody remember the laws? What was the laws that we used to explain? Um, what were the laws that we used to explain how the how this works? How this works? Anybody remember? Well, the laws that that govern the transformer are the, are the laws of. Uh, Electromagnetic induction. And there were two guys. There were two guys that, that they basically used to explain these laws. We got F. Huh? Clemens plus Faraday. One was Faraday, and the next was what? L. Faraday and who? Anybody want any member? One was Faraday and one was what? Lens. It was lens. Yeah. Right? Just a quick review. Faraday said what, Faith? Wait, Ishana in this class. Ishana, go next. One start study for chemistry and huh? biology. What do we have next? Yeah. Um, what was asking earlier again? Right, yes. What was the law? What is Faraday law? Faraday basically said that whenever a conductor cuts magnetic P lines, what's happened? Current induced. That's okay? So whenever a magnetic P line cuts all right, it's over. All right, copy it down. I'll call it down slower. Right, so here's only two member for Faraday. Faraday said that, well, write it down fast, write it down fast. Faraday said that the faster, the faster magnetic field lines cut a conductor, the faster magnetic field lines cut a conductor, The greater is the EMF induced. The greater, the greater is the EMF induced.
so the faster magnetic field lines cut a conductor, the EMF means voltage or current in this case. The greater is the EMF or voltage or current in this. Okay? Better? Right? Our uh, lens law doesn't really apply too much here, but lens said what? Lens said direction always opposes motion. Lens said that direction always opposes motion. Opposes. All right, nice. So here, here's how it works quickly, right? Just take a look at this, follow the blue lines, right? Follow the blue lines. So here we have uh, an alternating supply. So that alternating supply is supplying current here, right? Remember, once you have current by right hand, by right hand grip rule, once you have current flowing, you have magnetic fields. So it means that around this, around this solenoid, there's magnetic fields. So it means that magnetic fields always touching this um, soft iron. All right? And every time it changes, because remember, alternating means it will go in one direction first, then it will change and go in the opposite direction. Every time it changes, the magnetic field lines are going to cut this conductor. After it continuously cuts the conductor, it's going to develop a current or a voltage in the conductor. That's okay? So if the conductor now has a voltage, that voltage will create a magnetic field that will be transferred here. And if there's a magnetic field in the coils, then you'll get a voltage here. That's okay? So basically, the voltage, I'm going to show it one more time. The voltage from the, the voltage from the primary, it basically induces a magnetic field in the soft ion core. That soft ion core becomes magnetized and it transfers the magnet, magnetism to the coils. Since the coils become magnetic, they will induce a voltage in it, right? So the voltage from here is induced here, right? That's why it's called electromagnetic induction. It induces a voltage here, right? Using electricity and magnetism. And the two laws that help explain it, Faraday's and Lenz's law. Okay? Well, more so Faraday's law. Not really Lenz because you wouldn't be able to see direction here. So good. That's okay? So one will be transmitted to the next. Now, there are there is one thing that we need to recognize. That some of these transformers, some of these transformers are said to be ideal. Right? What does ideal mean? Ideal means no power loss. Okay? It means that all the power in the input is equal to all the power in the output. But in real life, will that happen? Will everything be transferred from one to the next? No. Some is lost, right? And uh, that makes the chance and that makes the transformer well less than a hundred percent efficient, right? So for now, ideal means one hundred percent efficient. Okay. Oh gosh. Just a little bit more pants. Right. Anybody remember how to find power? Brasnell? Power's max. Power's max. Okay. Anybody remember how to find power? Power is what? Current by voltage. Right. All your 
I sent you all this summary. I want you all to learn the summary. Those are formulas. Just formulas alone. Just spend time during this next week or two just learning that alone. All right? So, so once you see something, you should be able to add this you know the formula, right? Power is current by voltage, right? Current. So power input is current in the primary, voltage in the primary, current in the secondary, voltage in the secondary. So if I ask you to find power, that's the way you find power, right? No, no, the, the, the metal in the middle, the soft iron core in the middle, you mean? That is to transfer the magnetic properties from the coil to the next coil. So it's like I am the magnet and you're not a magnet yet. You need to transfer it. I have to connect for that metal between them. No, no, no. So once you have current and coils, it has more magnetic fields. I really, really, really current the transfer. And the free way induce EMF, which will induce current as well. So, so if you rearrange the formula, right? If, if, you, um, if, if you rearrange this formula, you will see that BP over VS is equal to IS over IP. Okay? Please note that this formula is only used when ideal. So if the question does not say ideal, you cannot use it. I'll show you what, what to do, right? Okay, nice. If you want to add on the little thing that we learned a little while ago, you can add on NP, NS is that. All right, let's do a couple questions, assuming it's 100% efficient, right? So I'll give you an example one. I'll give you a transformer. Uh, it has some coils here, it has some coils here. Number of coils in the primary is 1,000. Number of coils in the secondary is uh, 200, right? Voltage in primary, this is 100% efficient. This is ideal, right? Number of, I mean, voltage in the primary, we don't know. Voltage in the secondary, um, let us see, it's about 0 0.5 volts, okay? So I want you to find a few things to me. Find one, voltage in primary. Two, if the input power, if the input power is three watts, let's see if we could find, Let's see if we could find input current and uh, output current. All right? So we have three things to find. Both in the primary, current in the primary, and uh, current in the secondary. Right? I'll just label it here for you. I don't to misinterpret it, right? This is where the passivos, this is how the passivos will look, right? The number in the primary is 1,000, number in the secondary is 2,000. Put it together, use the right relationships. What type of transformer is this? Ideal. So it means that you can use the formula from before. 
All right, we're going to do one where you can't do that short. Online, are you okay there? What you're going to use to help you find VP? By the way, what type of transformer is this? Step up or step down? Step. It's, it's 1,000 to 200. Eh? So that's step down, right? Yeah. Cheryl, what the phone are we using? So we're using NP on NS is equal to VP on VS. NP is 1000. NS is 200. VP is what we're trying to find. And VS is 0 0.5. Why is do you have to simplify it out, Raj? Why is start with VP? What you do? Cross multiply. Nice. So 200 VP is 1,000 by 0 0.5. Right? So you'll get, um, what's that, 500? 500, 500 divided by 200. I got 2.5 volts. Anybody get up? Yeah, nice. That's a good start. Online, anybody got up? Darion, Katrina. Benson, nice. Let's be who my good pants are. All right, nice. Um, so part two now, they want to find current. What do we have? Faith, what do we have that would allow us to find IP? Current in primary. What do we have? Yeah, we realize Katrina. Yeah. What do we have, Faith? We have input power, Faith. So we have power in the primary and we have voltage in the primary now. See that? So how do we find current in the primary? Yeah, fit? What the formula we use in fit? Check out, just come down there. Right? Yeah, fit. Fit, this whole class, we do two formulas. If it's not NP on NS, it's the next one. Power is what? That, that's all? Guess one of them now? Right, power is equal to IV. 
So current in the primary is power in the primary over voltage. So that'll be three over 2.5. How much is that? One point two. One point two amperes. Right? Now find current in secondary. Oh yeah. Find current in the secondary. Quick, 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 and let's go one next four. All right, so for those who quietly lost there, here's what you need to remember. Remember, we're doing transformers, right? And this relationship here in transformers, this relationship here, the one in blue in the little rectangle, it shows us how current in secondary, current in primary, voltage in primary, voltage in secondary, coils in the primary and coils in the secondary, how they all related. So that this one formula here shows you how all of the quantities are related for ideal transformer. So basically all you're doing is you're finding the quantities you know, substituting and then solving. That's all. Okay? That one formula there shows you how current, voltage and number of coils are related in the transformer. So all I did here is I just manipulate what we had. So I want to find current in the secondary now, and I know it's ideal. So I'm going back to the relationship IS over IP is equal to our coils in the primary and secondary. So I'm using number of coils in the primary over number in the secondary. That's okay. So I just went to the relationship and I have IP, I have NP, NS, and I solve for IS. That's okay. So therefore, IS, I write now the next side, right? This is part B here. IP, we just found it, 1.2. NP, NP is 1,000. NS is 200. Right, cross multiply, work it out, and you'll get IS. I got six. No? Yeah, six. If you want, you could also use the voltage part of it instead of the instead of the number of coils.
All right, let's go again. Ready? All right, I don't know if you're seeing. Yeah. Right, answer this form pass here first. You're seeing that? Label those four pass up, no? Oh, I don't, I don't know the year. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. May 2018. May 2018. Sorry about that. Right, label the. Label it, don't draw the transformer. Just label it and state it, state it type. Label it and then state it type. All right, A is what? A is what? Primary coils, nice. Um, uh, B is what? B is the soft iron core. I might do a live this weekend earlier. Yeah? If I want to watch it pass paper, I might do the solution for it. All right? I'll put my son in before I do it. Uh, C is what? Right, very good. AC supply. I would like if you also say input. <coughs> input alternating supply, right? And uh, D is what? Right, D is secondary coils. Online, are you okay there? Quinn, are you okay? Sahara, what type of transformer is shown in figure six? Step up, very good. It's a step up. Number of coils in the primary is less than the number of coils in the secondary. Say the formula that relates BP and N. 
that pass. State the formula that relates B, P, and N. Every pass paper all year. And every pass paper, there's at least seven or eight marks that you get out of the 15 by just remembering things. Regurgitating definitions and formulas. All right? Yeah. What's the formula you're using here? Look, look, Katrina, I have time to type it out there. Good job, Katrina. NP on NS is what? VP on VS. Nice. Let's go again. Try this part here. Hmm? V on N. And let's just state what V on N is. What, what V is and what N is. So like you bring everything on one side, I mean? Try this fast. What is the keyword underneath in part three? Keyword is what? It says? Right, good. Oh yeah, I just want to show you. I can use these same numbers and scratch off a hundred. And the seven five up to the hundred. Right. Right, so we're doing the same thing again, right? Uh, the five, the five thousand, that's what? What's that five thousand? N? Right, what? Right, so NS, what is the 50? NP, nice. What is the um, 12 volts? VP, nice. And what is the um, 6? Right, I, P, nice. So it's important that they could write down what each of those values represent. Can you do that, Cheryl? I just read it, everything right there, right? Primary coil, they give you the voltage. Current, they give you there, and the primary. Okay, so every, all the quantities, 
you need a ride there. Find the power in the input and so on, right? So as you read, underline all the important stuff. All right, let's wake up for the calculations. Right, so power is what? Power is I by V. Nice. So you don't want to that easy marks, right? I is what? I is how much? I is six and V is twelve. So that's what? Seventy two. Nice. The voltage across is secondary. What's the formula we using? N P over N S S V P over V S. So NP is 50 over 5,000 is uh, 12 over VS. Cross multiply, do your little thing, and how much you get to VS? 1,200. Wait, so much? But, but it's a step-up transformer, right? So that, that answer is correct. Everybody okay with that? Now, current in the secondary. Since it's 100% efficient, what's the formula we're going to use? What's the formula we're going to use, um, Cheryl? Cheryl, what's the formula we're going to use since it is 100% efficient? Let's look back, Cheryl. Raj, help or not? What's the formula we're going to use to get current is ideal? Right? So we could use two things. We could use NP on NS is equal to IS on IP. Or... We could use power in the primary equal to power in the secondary. Anyone could do it. All right. All it is just two little formulas you're playing around with here. You'll have to learn them, learn them, right? And then work it out. Primary is 50 over 5,000. Current in the secondary was 6 over IP. Sorry. Huh? Right, cross multiply, and you'll end up with six by fifty over five thousand, which is how much is that? Three hundred. What? I know, but tell me what it is now. Decimal. Zero point, zero point one. Zero point one amperes, right? 
I just want to show you one thing before we wrap up, right? All I get at is so it's three hundred over fifty. So that is three over fifty. That's not zero point one. Oh boy! Oh, oh, he wrong the top. He wrong the top. So your point zero six, right? So that is what you do when you have a primary, sorry, when you have an ideal. When you don't have an ideal now, here's what will happen. Am I right? Here's what will happen, right? Am I right? When it is not ideal, here's what is happen. You have to remember this formula here. Efficiency is Power, power what? Remember, remember the point of efficiency? Output over input, right? Efficiency is power output over power input by 100. Okay? If you all never heard that before, write it down, right? Efficiency is output over input by 100. All right? So, let's just say the efficiency is 100. So if E is 100, the formula is 100 is equal to output over input by 100. Right? This will cancel with this. Or you could carry it across here and you'll get 1. So it means that 1 is equal to output over input. Or as we said, input equal to output. So whenever it's ideal, you have that nice relationship there. But... If the efficiency is less than 100, let's call the value K. What's our lamp to the formula? The formula becomes K is equal to power output over power input by 100. Move it, move it across and you can say something like this. K over 100 is equal to output over input. Right? So this is the relationship that you're going to use if it is not 100% efficient. So if the, if the question says 75% efficient, take up K and write 75 over 100 as power output over power input. Okay? So that's, that's the formula I want to tell in. All right? All right, so for transformers, so that's it for transformers. The next thing that we have to just revise on transformers is just go over the problems, the, the problems with the transformer and how they fix it. Anybody remember how, how they fix it? The transformer is heat too much. It's, it's overheat. So what they do is they take the transformer and cool it in an oil bath. Right? And, in, and instead of one big slab for the soap iron core, they sheet it off. So the big slab is made up of different sheets, and each sheet they, they put they laminate it, right? And they have a next thing where you cup of windings instead of normal fire and thing. All right, so you can read up on that from your notes, right?